Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus chapter 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt type of world Genesis 50:26 Every man and his household came with Jacob That's important Joseph did not come with Jacob he was already in the land Because when you get over to Acts and Stephen t tells his report the history lesson, oh, the numbers don't make sense. Yes, they do. You just didn't read. I found, as I get older as a Christian, I, I, I do work with people. People don't read their Bible. And yet they're quick to say, oh, that's not something that happens in the Bible. That's something that Jesus would not do. That's not in the Bible. And they just show their foolishness and being idiots because it is in the Bible. You got to read. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Issachar, Zemblin, and Benjamin. Dan, Nephtali, and Gad, and Asher. All the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls. For Joseph was in Egypt already. See, God told you two places. King was Egypt and already in Egypt and Joseph died and all his brethren and all that generation now let's look at something remarkable here and we looked at it in Genesis 46 70 people went into Egypt of Jacob and we saw some of the grandsons and some great grandsons 490 years and do you know it approximately Exodus 12 37 which is later 600,000 men came out and that's not counting the women and that's not counting the children Israel did multiply and the children of Israel were fruitful yeah they were and increased abundantly. They sure did. They're starting a nation. When Israel comes out of Exodus, Egypt, they are a nation and God calls them an army. A nation needs an army. Dan is out looking for land. They come upon these group of people. They're isolated. They don't have nothing to do with anybody else. They don't have an army. And Dan went in there. Okay, it's our land. You can't have this world peace and no armies that some of these people, they want. Because somebody is going to come in and take over that has an army. Wax exceedingly mighty. And the land was filled with them. Wherever you look, there's Jews. And things are fine, things are dandy, things are great. There is a relationship between the Egyptians and between the Jewish people. Joseph and, and Jacob were highly known and well favored. And Egypt is blessing them. So they're going to get blessed. Now comes, I will curse them that curse you, the Jews. Now there arose a new king over Egypt, 
which knew not Joseph. Joseph is the greatest type of Jesus Christ. A new king that did not know Joseph. There's a king coming that does not know Jesus Christ. He's called the Antichrist. He has no personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He has no personal relationship with Joseph. The previous Pharaoh did. And he said unto, now this is interesting, his people. We have what is thought during this time, a group of people called the Hysox. They're under Assyrian rulership. There's a foreign king. And when it means that a new king that did not know Joseph, here comes another uh, country, here comes another army. Another man from somewhere else didn't know what Jewish people were, didn't know what the story of Joseph. And he settles in and becomes the ruler of this nation. He's an, he's an outsider. And he said to his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Isaiah 52, 4. There's a threat of Israel. And it can't be an Egyptian threat because Israel would not have populated themselves that quick. And Israel and the Egyptians, are they like each other. They're, they're working together. So there's an outside source. And I have a funny feeling as the Antichrist comes in with peace. Oh, there's going to be workings with the Jews and, and the world. They're going to get together. And then he's going to set up his throne. He's going to set up the sit on the mercy of all mercy seats. And proclaim that he is God. And then the Jews will be in trouble. And you will have the three and a half years of the great tribulation of Jacob's trouble. That moment when that veil or curtain, whatever it's going to be, pulls apart. Slides open, whatever is going to happen. It's not going to proclaim that Jesus is God and Jesus saved and the power of Jesus Christ as Jesus rent that veil. It's going to proclaim that somebody is sitting on that mercy seat and no one belongs there. Jesus did not sit on that mercy seat. He passed through that mercy seat. With his blood, he made an offering. This new world leader is going to sit in that mercy seat and proclaim that he is God and the world is going to love him and favor him. We preach Jesus Christ in the public and they hate it. Got called today darkness and, and cruelness. Come, na, come on, come on, <laughs> come on, you, 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 this expression, come on, it's right there in the Bible. Let us deal wisely with them. Let's think about this. Let's get wise. Least they multiply and it comes to see. Least they multiply. They're not a threat to us yet. But they're getting there. And come to pass that when they, when there falleth out any war, they join also our enemies. Okay, what he's saying here is, listen, here we are. We're just outsiders. If another nation comes, and if these Jews join that nation, then we'll be overthrown. Even if the, if the Egyptians say, you know, they're going to revolt against me. If the Jews join them, there's enough people with the Jews to say, we're in trouble. So they're not a threat yet, but with another mass of people gathering, then the Jews are a threat. They join also unto our enemies and fight against us, so get them up out of the land. So there's a threat now. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. So we're not going to kill them. We're just going to put them to slave labor. We're going to make them slaves. And not just good slaves. We're going to deal with them with hardship and burdens. And you don't hear about this in the public school system. You don't hear the Jews crying out worldwide on how we were mistreated. 
If there's any nation to cry up and revolt and, and riot would be the Jews. And they haven't. So as far as this slavery and the stuff that's going on in, in America, why don't you just shut up? Most of you are getting money that you're not even earn, earning. God's people were treated worse by an African nation. Let's put that in the public schools. Let's put the Bible. You can't put the Bibles in the school because the Bible's correct. The Bible will ruin your thinking. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with burdens. And they built for Pharaoh, the king, verse 8, he's called Pharaoh. He has addressed himself as a god king over Egypt. Treasure cities, Python and Ramesses. And, and even the threat, they still wanted the world to be their devil. We are in the world, but we are not the world. The world doesn't want to get rid of us totally because we do work. We labor. We're the honest ones. We're the ones they can trust. And upon us, God says, hey, I'll make it rain upon the just and the unjust. When God removes his church, his saints, then you're in the realm of Satan. But the more they inflicted, the more abusement, the more they inflicted them, the more they, they multiplied and grew. And that is through the book of Acts. History repeats itself. And when you saw when, when persecution throughout the church history was wrought, by England, by nations, even in America, people grew. When America said, you can't preach that, and we'll put you in jail, a preacher would stand behind the, the walls of a jail, cry out before the, the, the bars of the window to the people outside and proclaim Jesus Christ, and they get saved and they get angry. Why are there no... Revivals in America today because there's no persecution. We've got a constitution that makes us all feel nice with a padded rear end for our pews. The, the more they flip, the more they multiply and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. They, the Assyrians. We can't get rid of them. We can't reduce their population. They're growing. The book of Acts. And this would be the Apostle Paul. He is grieved that Christians are growing. I need a letter to go to Damascus because they're growing there. Let me bring them and put them in jail. Let me kill them. Go, Paul. The growth of the church made Paul angry. The growth of the Christ, of the Israelites are making the Assyrians angry and scared. They would say about Paul and the apostles to turn the world upside down. And the Egyptians, the Egyptians now, the people that had great respect for Jacob, had great respect for Joseph, the Egyptians now, under their rulership, made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, stiffness, fury, hardness. 400 years, make bricks and make babies. They didn't want the baby part. 114 degrees Fahrenheit to 42 degrees Fahrenheit would be the average temperatures of Egypt when I looked it up. They are in a desert climate. And you think they would let them go have time to go have water at the water cooler? Not with bond, not with bond, not with affliction, not with hardship. 
They made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick. This is what we found in Genesis when they tried to make the Tower of Babel. Man-made rock. And in all manner of service in the field. The world is the type of the, of the world. The field is the type of the world, Jesus said. Make brick and harvest for us. It was Joseph that, that brought about the corn that saved for seven years of the famine. Now get out there and work, Jews. You want to talk about cotton picking? I'm talking about grains, harvest, in the book of Exodus. Talk about making bricks, hard bondage, by the Egyptians, the Africans, to God's people. Now they're showing an abomination to Hebrews. We hate you. We hate your shepherds. We hate your God. Get to work. Get to work. May their lives bitter and hard bondage in mortar and in brick. And all manner of service in the field. All manner of service in the field. Feed the animals. Plant. Harvest. Make the fences. Till the ground, water the ground. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. There was no light duty. It was hard. And the king of Egypt, king of Egypt spanked to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shephira, and the name of the other Pua. Now I don't know why there's only two mentioned. I'm going to assume there were more. Now these may have been the head of all the midwives. These may have been what you probably today call the chief nurse of all the women. But there are two mentioned. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife, there's office. There's the first time office shows up in the Bible. And it's not air conditioned, it's not a desk, it's not a computer, it's not a water cooler. When you go into a, a woman's house, she's about to give, ba give birth to a baby, that's your office. I want to get me an office job. Really? Okay, go deliver, go deliver babies. I don't want to do that, but that's an office job. Office of the midwife to the Hebrew women. So the Hebrews took care of the Hebrews. The Egyptians ain't doing it. And see them upon the stools. That's how a woman would be. She would sit or kneel in a particular way. I can't explain it. I mean, I can explain it, but I want to be clean. It's not how the Americans do it. If it be a son. Now, we know the babies come out by head. The head comes, the shoulders, the chest, the belly, the belly button. If it be a son... Then, when you recognize the sex of that child, then he shall kill him. Probably before the, he's probably suggest even before the feet come out of that womb. If it's got a penis, you kill it. How's that for an order? If it be a daughter, then she shall live. I don't know why he spares the daughter. But the midwives feared God. Romans 13 says we are to obey the powers of that be. The book of Acts, they told Peter and James, or John, I forget which one, but Peter, don't you dare preach that Jesus here. And they were rearrested for preaching Jesus. And Peter says to him, hey, listen, we ought to obey God better. It is wrong to murder. And if you are ordered by the government to kill somebody like this, we're going to see God honor these midwives. Now this is not war. The Bible shows if a war comes in protection of country, you grab a gun if you're called and you go fight. Jehovah Witness. But this is outright murder and most people with abortion know it's murder. This is abortion. 
This is nine month abortion. Let her go through the full term. If it's a male, kill her. Abortion. Haven't we gone very far in history? History is repeating itself again. If you be a daughter, then, you shall, then she shall live. But the midwives fear God and did not as the king of Egypt of king of yeah king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men child alive. Now he has not told her what the penalty is yet. He just gives them more. You kill those child. He does not expect them not to obey him. And the the male children are born and they don't do anything. What the king said. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing and have saved the men children alive? So the king of Egypt knows what's going on. He knows there's a bunch of male babies that should not be. And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women. That's a very basic fact right there. At least they know the difference. For they are lively and are delivered er before, sooner, the midwives come in unto them. So what they're saying is, and it's, it's, it's a lie. King, we get there and that baby's already been born and if it's a male, it's been hidden. You see that in the next chapter with Moses. We don't get a chance to go in there and, and to get that child because they're too quick. And it's a lie. Now, are lies bad? Yeah, they are. But God never rebuked Rahab for her lie for saving spies. It looks like, according to the Bible, that there is one lie that God will not judge you by. If it involves saving one of his people's life, whether Jew or Christian. That's what it looks like. There are a few lies in the Bible that save someone's life. One woman put a bunch of men inside of a well, and she lied. Rahab put them up in the law. And she lied. These midwives, they lie. And there's no rebuke from God. Matter of fact, God's going to bless them. Therefore, God dwelt well with the midwives. God honored and blessed them. They are breaking a good law. The law says murder, and they're not doing it. And God says, that's good. And we have not had the law yet. But God told Noah, when they got out of the ark, any man that kills anybody, his blood shall be upon him. These midwives do not want to be charged with the blood. Therefore God dwelt well with the midwives, and the people multiply and wax very mighty. <laughs> They're still producing children. And it came to pass, because the midwives fear God, that he made them houses. Let's look at John 14, 2. The Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 2. He's one of the verses you don't want to look up in a modern Bible, by the way. 14.2 Made them houses. We're going to get something better. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. God's in the business of building. New Jerusalem. He made them houses. I mean, did God come down and, and hammer a nail? No. But then again, when you read Acts 
He said, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Is it a physical house he's building them? Or is he honoring and blessing their entire family? That's of interest. Is it physical or is it family? Because house can be family. It can also be a structure. Could be both. God may be honoring these women's family. You say, well, how's that? Well, Rahab, wasn't her fam family saved? They were. And Pharaoh charged all his people. The, the midwives are not working. Saying, every son that is born, ye... The Egyptians or the Assyrians, ye shall cast into the river. And every daughter ye shall save alive. He's keeping the daughters alive. And Pharaoh will end up drowning in the Red Sea. Now, if you don't think Pharaoh died in the Red Sea, this is Galatians 6 7. He's going to reap what he sowed. He's been killing the babies. He doesn't die, die in the Nile River, he dies in the Red Sea. Now, the Egyptians are killing the Israelites. Let's erase this from history. Let's remove it. Let's get a big eraser. Let's get another Bible. Let's go to Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. Matthew 2, 11. And we'll see the interesting wording. If we were to erase history, Matthew 2, 11, we're not going to do that. Matthew 2 11. Now watch this. This is interesting. And when they were gone, come into the house. That's what God took care of the midwives. And saw the young child. This is the wise man. He's not a baby. He's a young child. With Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What a gift to give to a baby, a young man. I almost said baby myself. And being warned of God in a dream, they could they should not return to Herod. They departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. Oh. And be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Does that sound familiar? It's a reverse. And when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. This is Exodus 1. History repeats itself. America is going to learn that hard. And was there unto the death of Herod. You know how long they were in Egypt? To the death of Pharaoh. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the gospel saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod. When he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children, males and females, that were in Bethlehem, and all the coast thereof from two years old and under. That's what he gives us about the date of Jesus. Jesus was two years old or younger. We can't erase Exodus. Because Matthew, Rome does the same thing. All right, let's erase Exodus. Let's erase Matthew. Let's get a new Bible. Okay? Let's get rid of it. History, we don't need that no more. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Where are we going there for? Because we're going to erase the history. And when we erase a history, we're going to see what happens. 
In Revelation chapter 12, we'll do in verse 3 to see the ruler. And verse 3, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. Oh, there's your king. There's your ruler. Having seven heads and ten horns. And seven crowns. There's your authority. Upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Joseph's dream said that's Israel. You eleven stars, you fell down and bowed down before me. And they cast him to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be devoured. And for to devour her child as soon as it was born, Exodus. Satan in Exodus and Matthew is trying to get rid of that Jewish seed. So if you erase Exodus, if by chance you erase Matthew, when you come to Revelation 12, you're not going to know what's happening. And when the Jew has come to this part in the tribulation period, he's going to say, something has happened before. And they're going to remember the Exodus. And they cannot, if it's in the book of Matthew, they cannot think, well, you know, the New Testament is bad. We don't can't read it. They cannot forget that it happened during the Roman reign. With Jesus the Messiah. They've got to honor that there was a killing of children of two years old and younger. And here is the Messiah proclaimed that he goes into Egypt. And now we run to the great tribulation period. And here is a woman, Israel. She's about to give birth. And Satan wants that child dead by eating him. Now, shall we erase Exodus? Shall we erase Matthew? Shall we get rid of Revelation chapter 12? Let's do that. Let's bring something else up. Open the box. Grab the elements. Hocus, pocus, me, my, po pocus, a boom, boom, boom. This bread is literal Jesus' body. This blood is literal Jesus' blood. But the Bible says... Uh, John chapter 1 verse 11 he came unto his own he received them not so Jesus is a Jewish person here's a Jewish piece of bread that they said is actual body of Jesus here is the blood it's not God's blood Acts 20 28 it's blood of a Jewish man because it said it's actually Jesus blood here it is in the bread the wafer here it is in the hooch now let's put it upon our tongues let's drink it and let's eat and drink what we proclaim is a Jewish body. History has done what is done. It repeats itself. Every day there are people who are drinking and eating a Jewish body. Proclaiming it's God. Jesus. And that's been in Exodus, Jewish, Jewish babies are being killed. That's in Matthew, Jewish babies are being killed. Revelation, Jewish babies being killed. And when you profess that that is Jesus' body, that is Jesus' blood, he's Jewish. Born of a Jewish woman. And you're trying to devour it. It's interesting. That history will repeat itself. And Pharaoh charged all the people saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river. Now when Herod does it, he just says, Just kill him. I wonder how they did it. And the Bible goes far as to say, And the women just cried out, Rachel weeping. And unable to be comforted. And you know the women of, of, of Israel are weeping and are in sorrow that their children are being killed. And they're going to be weeping in sorrow when they're killing the babies under the Antichrist. 
history has repeated itself. 